Okay, so my next project is to take this Fermi power strip. I use these for power drops on stage. And I've already modified this one. I took the tail off of it where it just had a Edison plug hardwired to it and I put them on power con so I could have different length cables. So I didn't have to have a whole bunch of extra cable or didn't have to run extension cables to it. But I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna modify this again. We're gonna put a power con out right here so we can daisy chain these because these are just usually for back line, go on the front of the stage. These do have a conditioning in them, EMI, RFI, surge, but pedal boards, stuff like that always gets plugged into these, so nothing major. I've got some 14.3 SO wire we're gonna use. I don't have all my connectors yet, but I think we're gonna go ahead and take this apart, unhook this one, drill for this one, and then we'll just use this for a spacer because they're the same size. So let's see how we're gonna do that. Four screws. This is connects all your grounds inside. There you go. So here's the inside of a Furman power strip. Here's your conditioner. Just three outlets. Looks like they're just using back wire. Looks to be about 14 gauge. And then here's where I've added power con in. It looks like it needs a little bit of repair because it looks like the connectors have pulled a little bit. So I think we'll re-solder these. I really like to have the pass through on this end, but I don't think there's enough room because of the outlet there. So I think it's gonna have to go right here just because it's the only place we have room to put another connector. I'm gonna go ahead and take this power con input off. Careful not to cut the wires on the sheet metal. Yeah, see? There you go. This one definitely needs repaired. Connector failed. So we're, we'll redo these as well while we got them apart. Now the way we're going to wire these, see we've got our three wires coming from our power source. Obviously all our grounds get tied here to the box. So here's our line and our neutral. We want to split the power coming in to go to the next box before it goes to the conditioner. So what we'll do is we'll cut these, splice these into the other outlet somewhere in here. Got these cut. All these connectors ended up pulling off, so we're just going to go ahead and put new ones on. And if you're going to be doing this kind of work, get yourself an actual crimping tool instead of pliers. These work so much better. I'll show you what the actual crimp looks like when I get this pulled off of here. There. See how it folds one over top of the other? Maybe? Yeah. See how it folds one over the other? Much cleaner. So we'll solder that. Remember when you're soldering, solder follows the heat. So I like to put my heat on the bottom, solder on top, so I know it sucks clear through.
All right, heat shrink time. Just run these on low. Try to shrink down where it belongs. Shouldn't take long. One. Two. And three. Next thing we need to do is strip back these wires. And remember, you're seeing me figure out how I'm going to do this at the speed I'm figuring out how to do this. So, some things may not look the way they do right now when I'm done. Because I have been known to make mistakes. But that's okay. That's part of figuring this out. <clears throat> that is tough. Tough. Twist these up. And we're going to tin the ends of these with the iron. Oops. That's not good. Tear everything up. Clean the end of our iron. Get that warmed up. Important tip of soldering, if you drop your iron, don't try to catch it, let it fall. You only do it once. Why does it seem like no matter where you stand, the smoke from the solder always goes right in your face? Sure, it's not good for you. You should probably have a fan or something going. Yeah. There we go. Got those ends tinned up. Be careful not to add that was still warm. Any bulk to them so they'll still go in the connector. I'm gonna use these little wire nuts. I like the lever style better, but I'm out of them right now, so we'll use these. We're going to use these to make the connection from the input to the output to the outlets. So I'll show you how that's going to go. So this wire obviously goes to this box. So we'll put it here. Okay. That's locked in. All right, got the ends of all these tinned. So we'll take all of our lines will get connected in one. All of our 
neutrals will go in one. I like these the lever ones so much better. I've got some on order, they're just not here right now. These are okay, they're just hard to get apart later. Alright, so now we've got our power going to come in here into our three way wire nut. So it'll go into this box, and then we'll put our outlet in the middle of all these. I keep these all the same so I know which wire is going to be which. Next, we're going to need to drill a hole for the connector. And like I said, I don't have these connectors yet. They're on order. So we'll go ahead and put it back together for the way it is. And then when they come, we'll just pop it back open and swap these in. All right. Let's start laying this hole out to get drilled. Quartz. Quartz. I did. Okay, that should work. And then let's get the center of the hole. So I'm just going to eyeball the center of this connector to the edge. Six hundred and twenty thousandths. Just make a mark there. This doesn't have to be super precise. Just want to make sure everything's going to fit. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah. So this will be the center of our hole. I'm just going to eyeball between them, but use that for my distance this way. We're going to say right. Oops, I slipped. Right there. Try not to bend this box up, but I need to get a good punch. I got a little bit. This might be a little bit tricky to drill. We'll use an eighth for a pilot, and we don't want to get too much. This is cutting oil. Don't want to get too much in our box. It's really easy. Just sheet metal. Oh, yeah. Okay, there's our pilot. I think I'm just going to go for it with the big bit now and see what happens. Alright, we're back. Well, I forgot to video it. I ended up using one of these step drills to clean it up. And I didn't have one, so I had to go get one. And the reason I didn't have one is because how much these things cost? This thing was like 60 bucks. But, no better time to buy the right tool when it's your only option to get you out of the mess you've made. So we can continue on with this project. Got three more of these little jumper wires made up. They're all the same color. I just have one roll of 14 gauge stranded. So it doesn't really matter. I know what they are. Nobody else is going to be in here but me. Got another hole drilled. Now remember, this isn't the final connector. This is just here for a spacer right now. Got these ends tinned, crimped, soldered, heat shrunk. So for now, we're just going to do a little bit of a mock-up. And then when the connectors I ordered get here, we'll come back to this. This might be a little bit tricky because I bent the darn thing up so bad trying to get it drilled. Hope Maybe you Like that bent. Ow. So here we go. We got to drill these two holes for these screws. I 
I'm um, using this is number six by three quarter. You could get away with half inch, three quarters just what I have. And we're gonna drill a 332 hole for these. Careful not to drill into anything important. There we go. It's kind of ugly because it's bent up. But that's what the two connectors will look like. I really wish I would have had room to put it on this end for the pass through. But as you can see, the outlets there, I don't. We can go ahead and install these extra wires. Like I said, they're all red. Doesn't matter. Collar's not important. As long as you know where they're going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and wire up the one coming in. And then I'm going to take the other one out and just... When the other one comes, I'll show you the final installation and closing it up. All right, so these are marked line, neutral, ground. So here's our line, just like that. And the routing in the box might be a little tricky to figure out, but we'll figure it out. I'm not too worried. You could also pop rivet these in. I'm not really a fan of that. And you got to drill them out. Need to drill all kinds of fire on the like fire on the tank pots. So that. We'll put the back cover on and wait for parts. Call this done. I took a square box and made it not so square anymore. More I've seen worse. I've seen worse looking stuff come right out of the factory. Be careful when you tighten these. At some point this one's been over tightened and it's just about to rip. I'm actually going to back that screw off just a little bit. There you go. We'll finish this up when the parts come. These are not name brand. I might regret that later. But we'll see. So just have to make sure I get the right one. So it's a triple right. 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 And if I had some screws, we would be in. Let me get some screws. Okay. 
There we go. We are installed. We now have power con in and out. So there you have it. That finishes this project up.